Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and you'll be stuck at 3-5 forever if... All right, so first things first, if you don't have a good third shot drop, you will be stuck at a 3-0 or 3-5 for a very, very long time. All right, so yes, third shot drops are very, very difficult to learn. I'm gonna give you just a couple tips here on how to work on it. I suggest that you start up at the non-volley zone line. Start off with dinks here, okay? So I'm gonna hit a dink and then I'm going to move back. And when I'm doing this method here after every shot, um, getting further from the net, this is how I can work on my touch because a third shot drop and a dink is very, very similar. As you start from the non-volley zone and then you work your way back to the baseline, you will develop that touch. Remember, the biggest thing that we're trying to accomplish here is getting that ball down and getting that contact low for our opponent. So let's say I'm from right here, okay, and I wanna be lifting. And sometimes your third shots will be a little bit high, but that's okay, we gotta work through that. I don't hit perfect third shots all the time, right? That's why I practice them. A little bit windy today, but again, my main goal is to keep that ball down. That's how you practice it. All right, number two, you will be stuck at a 3-5 forever if you don't have a good third shot drive. Now, everyone talks about the drop, but you definitely need a drive so that you can be offensive on certain balls, and also you will need a drive when your opponent is back, right? You wanna keep them back. So. Really quickly for the drive, I'm gonna go over a couple key tips here. We wanna have a compact swing and I want to be in more of a close position here. So not open towards the net, my chest facing the net. I wanna be closed here as a right-hander and just put your paddle back here, um, kinda towards you know your right knee or right hip if you're a righty. And then I wanna swing from low to high and kind of just like a golf swing, I want to end to my left shoulder. So from here to here, and this is something that you can practice, but I'm just going to take a couple here. Go ahead and feed me. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now here, go feed me another one. Okay. And then one last one. Okay. All right. So really, really important. The drive takes a lot of repetitions, a lot of practice, but again, it's a low to high swing. Turn that shoulder, get in a close stance, start with your paddle here and swing up low to high. All right, so let's quickly hop to number three. You will be stuck at three, five forever if you do not have a good reset shot. We talk about the reset shot um, or reset volley a lot in our videos because it's a very, very important shot. What I would start with is I would just start here and then I would have a partner kind of just feed you here. Here we go. Okay, now notice here the big key elements here is not swinging my paddle and a good solid paddle face. Okay, here we go. Okay, good. Now feed me one more. Okay, notice my contact is out in front and I'm not taking a big swing, okay? And all I'm doing is blocking, go ahead, okay? Okay, now from this position, you can drop back in progressions and work a little bit further back. So go ahead, feed me there. Okay, now feed me here. Okay, that was a tough one. And then again, good position here. Okay, all right, so this is a way that you can work on your reset shot. Remember, key elements is nice and stable paddle, open paddle face, light grip pressure, and not a big swing, all right? Most of our resets we're just gonna be holding here. So start up at the non-volley zone line, gradually work your way back, and that's how you could train a good reset shot. Hi, if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're interested in exclusive on-court training with me, go ahead and go to brionispickleball.com forward slash coaching. Now, let's get right back to the video. All right, so number four, you will be stuck at three, five forever if you don't have a good serve technique. So if you are serving something like this, all right, um, that's okay. And you can get the ball in consistently, maybe, but we wanna make sure you develop a good swing, a good, nice swing on your serve, okay? So again, just like the drive, what I would suggest is you start your paddle right here. Look, I'm in a closed stance. I'm serving cross court here, and I'm gonna swing from here, swing low to high. 
from here, okay? My shoulders pointed towards the net right now. And then when I swing, I'm opening up, turning my hips and my core and my shoulders, and my chest is going to be facing my target at the end of my swing. So it's gonna look like this, a drop serve here, okay? Or out of the air. So notice it's the same motion, okay? But again, you need a good serve technique if you want to become a better player and move up. All right, so number five, you will be stuck at a three five forever if you don't have a good dink game. Remember, dinking is an essential part of pickleball. Maybe 3035, you might not see a lot of dinks, but as you hit that 4 0 level, you're going to need to have a good dink game or else that will get exposed. Okay, so you could practice your dinks just up here. Remember, key focal points, what I'm trying to do is get in good position for every dink I hit and trying to keep that low contact on the other side. Okay, whether I'm thinking with one hand or two, I'm getting back into ready position and all I'm trying to do is keep that contact low. All right, you got to be able to dink for long extended periods of time if you want to become a really, really good player. So again, you can go out there, dink cross court, dink straight on, but you're definitely going to need that. All right, so now let's move on to number six. You're going to be stuck at three, five, four ever if you don't split step in transition. What do I mean by this? As a serving team, you're gonna be serving, waiting for that return, and after you hit your third shot, you're going to be wanting to come up to the non-volley zone. If you're just walking through or if you're running through, you're gonna get caught all the time. So what I mean by split step is to come up, get ready for the ball, be nice and balanced on the balls of my feet, ready to go so I could defend. Anytime you're making your way through transition, when that ball is coming to you, you got to make sure you're stopped, ready to go in a nice open stance like this. Okay, so here we go. Let's say the return's coming. Okay, hit my third, stopped. Okay, it's all right. Here we go. Okay, one last time here. Okay, let's say I even hit a drive on the first one. Okay, so let's say the return comes back here. Here we go, let's say return comes, I drive it. Okay, split. Okay, split step. Okay, okay. Now, this is very, very vital, very essential for being a really, really good player. Don't get caught in transition, work on your split step. All right, so now let's hop into number seven and that is you have to have good low and high ball recognition. In this game, the biggest thing we're judging is contact point, okay? Like how high or how low our opponents are hitting. So every time we're working our way up to the net or any time in the rally, if our opponent is getting a high ball and we recognize that, we have to be ready for what? To, de to defend and be on the defense and get low. If they have a low contact point, we want to be more aggressive and move in. So you want to get that good recognition early. So one way that you can practice it, there's a lot of different ways, but here, I'm here in transition, I'm gonna be hitting balls, trying to drop balls in the non-volley zone. If it's high, maybe I take a step back, okay, here, and then if it's low, I'm gonna try to come up. So you feed here, okay, here we go. Okay, nope, a little high, a little high again. Good, okay. Now even though I missed that shot, I'm still recognizing a high ball versus a low contact ball. Again, here we go, okay. Okay, that was actually pretty good. I'm gonna come in on that one. That's a little high. Okay, there we go. A couple more times here. So let's see it again. Okay, here we go. All right, oh, that one's a little high. I'm gonna stay back and defend. Okay, stay back here. Okay, that one's good. So now I can start to come in. That one's a good one too. And again, okay. So that low and high ball recognition is very, very key. If it's high, defensive minded, okay? Get low, drop your paddle, and if you have time, maybe drop back one step. If it's good, if you know you could have a potentially lower contact, have them down here, or that ball's bouncing in the non-volley zone, that's when you could be more aggressive and then come in. Remember, that is the main thing we're assessing, contact point, high or low. And again, if it's high, be cautious, stay back or retreat. If it's a good ball, then we come in. This takes a lot of time to practice and that's how you practice it. All right, so now let's hop into number eight and that is have good solid volleys at the net, okay? Or anywhere you are, right? 
The volley technique is very, very important because when players are hitting the ball very fast, we need to have a good solid volley technique. So really quickly, this is a good ready position, slightly towards my backhand. And for the volley, all I'm doing is pushing a little bit forward from here to here. Okay, not a huge swing. I'm not pushing down, I'm actually pushing forward. So let's take a couple volleys here. Here we go. Okay, nice and controlled. You gotta be able to control the ball, hit good balls out in front, and notice I'm pushing forward, right? I'm not pushing down. If I'm pushing down, that's when we make errors. And again, I'm letting the ball come in to right around here. I'm not reaching and way out in front, okay? We wanna let that ball come in. You need nice, solid volleys. And one way that you can do it is just practice against a wall, or you can practice with a partner just like this. All right, so now let's jump into number nine, and that is you must have a good overhead motion. Now, in lower level of play, a lot of times, People are lobbing over our heads. The biggest thing, please do not do this. We don't want to come back on our heels, backing up like that, okay? What we wanna do, the very first move, is we want to get in a close stance. So you can drop that right foot back. If you're a right-hander, drop that dominant foot back and then put your left hand up and then your paddle up. This is a good position. You'll see a lot of good players. This is where they get to, and then I can shuffle like this, okay? So if a lob goes over your head, do not start to do this. Make sure you drop that dominant leg and then here. Let's think a little bit and then you kind of throw up a lob, okay? And then I'll, I'll smash it cross court, okay? Here we go, all right, okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, one more time, here we go. Again, okay, all right, okay, again, okay. Obviously those are really easy balls, right? But again, the major thing here, the most important thing is that we drop this dominant foot back. Again, I see it every time I go out, players start running back, you could fall, bump your head, concussions, not a good thing. The biggest thing you wanna do most important thing is you get that dominant foot back so you could be in here. Now, if it goes over your head, you can turn and run it down, all right? So for safety reasons and for good, efficient technique, you wanna get in this position and then swing down like that. All right, so number 10, you will be stuck at a three, five level forever if you do not have a game plan. So when you are going out there from the initial serve, right? You don't just serve the ball. Where am I gonna serve the ball? What's their weaker side? How hard am I gonna hit it? If I'm returning, what person do I wanna return it to? You know, what kind of return do I wanna hit? And then when I get up at the non-volley zone, what are my dink patterns? Where are they attacking me from? And also, you know, what, where's their weaker sides or their weak spots at? Remember, as you are playing and evolving, you know, as a player, you want to be able to make good decisions and fast decisions out on the court. So remember to have a game plan so that you can dominate the court. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully these 10 tips helped you out. We'll see you in the next video. For exclusive pickleball content from me, check out brionispickleball.com. For awesome pickleball paddles like this one, make sure to check the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Stands this side away